Deep Dive Film School makes no claim of ownership of the film footage used in this episode. The film footage is owned entirely by the copyright holders. Also, we're going to spoil the hell out of this movie, so this is your warning. Welcome to Deep Dive Film School! Oh, this week we're going to do that one scene from Bobcat Goldwaith's movie from 2013, Willow Creek. Bring on Bigfoot. Shh. What was that? All right, everybody. I am Adam Sherlock. And I'm Adam Pulcher. And if you like what you see slash here, please like and subscribe. You can find us in all the spaces and places that people find good media. That's right. Uh, we do festivals. We do 101s. Um, th- we do this segment, which is that one scene. Yes. Um, and this one, this is so funny because I I had this on my list for a while, and I said it to you like it was an old favorite of ours. <laughs> and I don't realize, I don't know who I saw this movie with that in my brain I switched it out with you. Yep. But you've never seen this movie, even though you're a fan of Bobcat Goldthwait's oh, yes. uh, direction. Oh, absolutely. Of, of I think yeah. World's Greatest Dad yeah. is, is up there for me on one of his best. Oh, yeah. um, and all of his stuff is great. He's a really heady person, and he's not afraid to say something maybe a little controversial. And, and you know, I mean, he's a comedian too, right? And, and so, he makes weird stuff. Windy City Heat's another one that to me is like the weirdest. I've never like, seen Shakes the Clown either. Oh, yeah, that's a weird one too. I mean, he kind of, if you look at his filmography, it's... It's, it's odd. It's very odd. And this Especially one, with your beginning being, uh, you know, the guy from Police Academy. <laughs> yeah, you're you're like, oh, you know, that guy who talks like a troll <laughs> yeah. in Police he's Academy. He's really heady, like, yeah, director. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's actually, like, when you hear him talk without the, like, he's And the girl in this is, and... is one of the teachers, I think, in World's Greatest Dad. Yes, she is. She so. is. Um, so I guess my first question is, um, well, I guess let's do a quick uh synopsis of of this movie i mean it really is it pays so much homage to blair witch oh i mean yeah I you mean, know it's, it's a found it's footage painfully film. obvious yeah. and i think he his whole thing was he was like i just wanted to try and do this i didn't want to reinvent the wheel yeah no. i just wanted to do i'm glad he spoke about it because it was uh, when i watched it i was just like yeah you're doing like beat by beat every, Blair Witch. Everything yes. that Blair Witch is yes. doing. <laughs> Although what he said his biggest influence was, which I thought was fascinating, um, his number one influence in making this movie was Grizzly Man. Grizzly Man and yeah. the movie Paper Heart, the Michael Sarah movie, which I don't think I've seen. I don't actually. think I've seen that one either. Um, but boy, the Grizzly Man thing, it's like this character who's like so excited to find Bigfoot. Yeah. And he's dragging his poor girlfriend along on this trek. And it's just another one of those cases of like, you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. Yeah. I mean, as an audience member who has seen Blair Witch, I knew what they were getting into to some yes. degree. I yes. do understand putting around the kind of the legend of Bigfoot. I think that was, that's all, that's a kind of fun twist to it. And, you know, this scene, that one scene that we're doing from Willow Creek, the tent scene yeah. is, you know, that's an extended version of what Heather gave us in Blair Witch, right? Like totally. the, the scene yes. that we have done before, very mm-hmm. similar. But now you got two people um, and they play with it a lot. And it's really interesting. Um, definitely the thing, most interesting part of the movie to me. Exactly. And this thing, this scene is 18 minutes yeah. long. And it, it, to me anyway, it does not feel like that. It's like you are watching it and you're like, well, we're sitting in this scene and we're like, well, what is it that's going to happen? Yeah. And then you're on pins and needles because like the Foley in this scene is pretty masterful. I mean, that's that's the biggest takeaway is this use of sound or not use, use of no sound. This has all the tropes in it. This this one does. After these multiple people are told you not to go down there, like obviously like, of course. But, you know, I mean, would a movie like The Conjuring be as good if she didn't go down the dark basement to to get whatever she needs to get down there. Every and, you know, Texas chainsaw, yeah, right? You like, have to go down there to make I a movie interesting. I wouldn't go messing around so, on somebody so, else's ranch. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> so you so gotta do I totally it. get that part of it. And then, you know, she's actually kind of the skeptical dad here through most of this. It's totally true. Um, I absolutely fucking hate this guy. He is, oh, isn't he just he's insufferable? Like, yeah. I, 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 he's probably the biggest reason why I didn't like this movie as much as I thought I would mm. um, because he was and maybe he's supposed to be maybe I'm supposed to hate him but like from scene one I'm like if I was stuck in a car with this guy I would be hating life right now like just just very pompous a lot about himself so sure of Bigfoot right he's just like oh yeah are you an idiot well and also this idea of like dragging your 
girlfriend that you proposed to on this trip. Oh my God. The it's beginning so, of the scene. Oh God. Painfully awkward. It's so awkward. And then he still thinks <laughs> I maybe would marry him. <laughs> and then you still, th- he still thinks he might get his, uh, some, um, video sex out of this, right? Yeah. He's like, Oh, we leave That's the really camera the rolling. Only opportunity like, where they do cut. That's the one cut in this whole shot. Yeah, right? exactly. But, but it's, you know, it's you're basically. totally right. It is so painful, but you also go, she, you care so deeply about this that you're making this like short documentary about this thing, but you're with somebody who does not give a shit about yeah. this thing you're super passionate also, about. Also, bro, your your on camera presence is not good. No, no, <laughs> that big old foam microphone in everybody's face, and he's and, just uh, he's just an odd guy, and I just I just hated his personality. Yeah. Um. Even in the tent, he's saying things like, "That's." That's obviously not human. When I'm yeah. like, well, I don't know about obviously, but yeah, that sound. I mean, that was a vocalization, right? And you're like, oh my god, yeah. And and you know, but that's kind of the fun of this scene. Getting into the scene now is kind of watching the emotions of her kind of being a non-believer going into like, oh fuck, maybe he's right. Yeah. Um. And to him, even even whatever doubt he may have that he wasn't fronting. Yeah. Um. Is is kind of questioned, I think, because there's a point where he's he kind of is like, oh shit, okay, so this is actually happening. And and, and his eagerness turns into fear, which is like so fascinating. And I think yeah. that that's the other thing. While the fully is so strong, the acting from both of these actors is like so good i mean her fear just that like wide-eyed like we're we're alone out here mm-hmm. like and this is like something's actually happening even if it was an animal i'd be wigging out too totally well and, and her <laughs> point too which again to go back to the blair witch thing is very uh josh leonard mm-hmm. character which yep. is this idea of like i think it's the people from town they told us not to come down here. They're fucking with us. And that's scary. That's pretty logical. Right. Though. And, you know, the other interesting thing to your point of, are we supposed to hate this guy? You know, one of the things that the Goldthwait said was his original idea was to do like a Christopher Guest yeah, I read style, that. Yeah. you know, mockumentary. I, w- I would have much more enjoyed that. <laughs> totally. But then I think that the thing was, is when he met all these he locals, fun of them. Yeah, he yeah. was like, oh, I really like these people. And like, that doesn't feel fair. But what feels fair is to have the super overly eager city guy who thinks he knows better than all these locals. And Mm -hmm. he also is a believer, but he's like hillbillies. Right. And so it's like he he does kind of get his comeuppance in that way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so it's like he like Bobcat got his cake and got to eat it, too, Mm -hmm. by like. Not so much making fun of the locals, but making fun of the eagerness of somebody who's going to, you know, turn down every every plausible caution that's given his way to be like, nope, I know better because I've read the book. So I'm headed out there anyway with my girlfriend in tow. And you're like, yeah, that's... We've been dating a few months. Yeah, that's fucking grisly, man. <laughs> I would man. love to know how like, long they've been dating because right? he asked her and she's like... uh no, like you haven't, haven't you been reading this situation that no, that's not going to Like happen. this may be fun and you're like hot or something yeah. and the sex is fun or whatever, but uh, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. You're not the Marion type. Yeah, like. Sorry, you, I just really don't like this guy. No, 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 for sure. Well, and also she, I mean, she obviously doesn't either because like one of the very first scenes in this movie is him like, we're out here, blah, 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 that's blah. And she goes, you don't have to use my name. Like she just doesn't even want to be in I his movie. Like, nope, don't even. This isn't really my thing. I'll be behind the camera, but don't don't put me in it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, the the noises. Obviously, let's get to the noises here yes. because that's a huge part of this and what creates this atmosphere. And I think being able to pull off a one shot like this and and kind of being successful at it to me really kind of comes down to have you created the atmosphere outside of the this scene to make the tension out there worth it think right. of stuff like paranormal activity where um or or jaws even like it's what you don't see right yeah. like, like the what your mind I, i've said this a thousand times on this podcast but what your mind can create is much scarier than what if i show you the shark yep. uh you know like it, it's much scarier so like so that element that trope is here with everything and i don't know um the use of sound here he was that i mean created that you know obviously 
big feet on sticks outside mm-hmm. like um and the point you know and this was one of the scariest parts in Blair Witch is when they come up and like like go through the tent yeah. and like kind of scratch the yeah. tent and you're like oh my god it's right there it's yeah. like real it's like yeah. penetrating reality yep and um and here they throw rocks which is way scarier totally <laughs> well and I love that again we made the joke about police academy earlier and yeah. like oh it's the the little guy with the weird troll voice Bobcat did do most of the vocalizations. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, of course and, he did. And the vocalizations are really, really <laughs> Did he really get the other guy from Police Academy to help him? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Winslow. Uh, what the fuck is his yeah, name? Yeah. He's on Spaceballs. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah, yeah. He did a, he did all his radar sounds. Ah. <laughs> 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 That'd be amazing. All of a sudden, you're just like, is that beatboxing? What is that? Um, but the sounds, like, those are really, really unsettling. One definitely sounds like unearthed. a woman crying. Yeah. Um, there's some, like, howling and growling. It almost sounds like an ambulance. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, is coming for them. Or, and then you hear it walking close by. And um, obviously, their tent has been thrown over earlier in the movie as yeah. well, whether that was a bear or whatever. Like, either way, that's yeah. a little like, hey, let's get out of here. Um, uh, anyway, so just another element. But, uh, you know. I, it's funny because I've looked around online and this scene is so divisive among audiences. There are people huh. who just applaud it so much for being like, thank you. Thank you. I don't want to see. You know, you think of a, a really popular, and you've probably never seen it, but a really popular found footage movie like um, Grave Encounters that has like CGI'd like stretchy monster faces on the ghosts. And you're like, there, that's what it looks like if you're going to show it. That's true. Right? Instead of just showing the darkness and having people scream and point at it, if you're just going to show it, that's what you're getting. Yep. And some people love that shit. And you know what? That's totally fine too. But I think for people who were like, take me back to that Blair Witch thing, take me sure. back to that, treat me, treat me like I have a brain. It was interesting, like the uh, the element of it being longer. You know, you're staring at the same thing for this long, and at times, like I'm all I'm looking at the back of the tent more than I am their faces. Totally. Like, and I'm like picturing things and shadows in my mind of what's up there, and like, are there faces inside that? And like, I like it's definitely the best part of a. O- an okay movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I, I completely agree. I actually applaud this. I think it's fun. I, I like that he went there. I like the idea of Bigfoot because that is like this mysterious American legend that is just kind of odd. But it's, you know... it's On its face, it doesn't seem that scary either. It's yeah. not like the Blair Witch where the, from its inception, but, the idea of the Blair Witch was scary. Whereas like Bigfoot, I'm like, well, yeah, you might like but is that why, is rip that, your head is off. Is that because... <laughs> You've seen Harry and the Hendersons, and it's like an endearing Bigfoot and not a scary one. Yes. If, if that was like a, if Harry and the Hendersons was a horror movie, you probably would have a different interpretation. Because what other interpretations of Bigfoot do we have other than the, um, what is the guy's name who uh, originally, uh, Patterson Gimlin footage. Right. The guy who took the original famous Bigfoot picture. I mean, I guess I go to like the Island of Misfit Toys, <laughs> yeah. Abominable Snowman. <laughs> He's adorable and his fur moves all the time. Um, but you're totally right. Like there isn't a ton of them. And so, in fact, I think the guy from Blair Witch, is this correct? I think he did a movie called Exists that is another found footage film that's about Bigfoot that came out just a couple years after hmm. uh, Blair Witch. I'm pretty sure Interesting. it's a Bigfoot movie. Yeah. Um, they shot this movie in five days. I know. Kind of fascinating. That's pretty fast. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I mean, and I and I think it's a fun But when experiment. you can have 20 minutes of your movie be one shot, that's a you're saving bucks. Oh yeah, big time. <laughs> you're like, "Look, we just need a tent. That's we don't why, even need we don't even need to be in the woods. Can we just use the tent that's at like that, Sportsman's that's Warehouse?" Why they made like seven <laughs> paranormal activities because you can do that forever. And oh, it's yeah. just you're waiting in this someone's camera in their house and you're like, "What was that?" Was that a Kleenex? Yeah, and if what it's the second one, you're just watching the pool cleaner go around, and you're like, ooh, I think in that scene it went backwards. I'm like, I'm, I care about a haunted pool cleaner? <laughs> Apparently I fucking do. <laughs> Apparently I have nothing better to do with my life. Um, anyways, um, yeah, the sound, the acting is great here. Um, yeah, those were the biggest takeaways. Yeah. And um, But the biggest you know, thing I learned again was like that if you can create that atmosphere – um, around it yeah. to pull off a scene like this, then then good for you. That's well, good. To your point, like just staring at it and going, 
is there something else I'm supposed to see here? Mm -hmm. That's a magical trick. Totally. If you can pull that off. Completely. I mean, it's like showing... something like a tent that could waver and move. Well, or or a darkened hallway, like in something like Repulsion. Mm -hmm. And you're like, is there something at the end of it? Yeah. You know, then you you add all that into your imagination. So I thought it'd be a fun one. Yeah, no, Um, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Uh, I'm glad I finally saw it because I do love Bobcat and I like to be able to speak to everything that he's done. I guess I need to see Shakes the Clown. Gotta see Shakes the Clown. All right. um, Thank you, everyone. Next week, we're going to begin our International Horror Festival, and we're going to start with the French film Revenge from 2017. So make sure to like and subscribe. Follow us on all the spaces and places where you find good media, where you get your podcast, all the stuff. Yeah. And we will see you next week. Bye, you guys. Thanks. Thanks.